clouds hang heavy in the sky, unleashing lightning, thunder and rain onto the sodden jungle beneath. A few stone walls clustered on a cliff edge mark the unassuming ruins of a keep. From the sea, you might pass by without paying attention to the ruins. Even climbing the muddy roads of Trillan up the hill to the ruined keep, you would be forgiven for assuming that the ruins were long abandoned. Guards melt from the undergrowth when you approach the ruined keep, but it's overgrown, and the only sign of life is a trail of smoke when they barbecue fish or squid. The entrance is a small square hole, all that's left of the original doorway. But you'd have to enter single file, and once inside, you're met by rows of heavy crossbows pointed at your face. But the party aren't in the protecting walls of the keep. Harathia is trudging through the rain-soaked jungle with a six-armed woman in a tatty blue dress, blades along her arms, and a strange blue glow from her eyes. Princess Mayanara. Further back, Adelbert is standing beneath a tree, with his bodyguard, Baha, wrapped in an embrace. Although Baha's head is on a swivel, this is not a safe place for a cuddle. Meanwhile, Zayma has raced off after the direwolf Bran and Alithia, and they're hunting for the princess's belongings, left out in the rain somewhere for them to do as they will. And that is where we'll pick up. So if you want to unmute yourselves, um, I think it makes sense to start with Zaymar. So you're, you're sneaking through the, um, the jungle at the moment. Um, you know the direction that Brian went off in. What do you want to do as you're sneaking? Um, I think I will probably move at a fairly cautious pace, um, but I'm going to sort of head in the direction that I think uh, we didn't get a sense of where the chests are, so I'm just going to head out and see if I can find them in the direction that I think they might be, or hope to <laughs> chance. But I'm not necessarily going to trust Bran and his nose. He, he can get, uh, he could be after a, some kind of rabbit or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'm so. Bran as a raccoon. <laughs> yeah. And you encouraged him last session to speed up a bit. Um, he's sort of hunting around now, um, trying to, to make sure that he keeps the scent of um, the princess. Um, and. Let's give him a. Give him a roll. So Bran is a uh, direwolf that accompanies Harathia wherever he goes. Uh, but he's currently with Alithia. Alithia is currently a ferret. No, um, I'm not. I'm a raccoon. raccoon. Sorry, raccoon. <laughs> ferret was the thing in chat, wasn't it? Alithia is not I a ferret. Is Alithia the, is a uh, raccoon. <laughs> is this the point where we get to, uh, if, if chat, give inspiration instead, like... Alithia turns into a different animal that they choose. <laughs> Please give me more of that. Animal oh, choice. Dear. What do you want her yeah. to go into next? It's yeah. like chaos magic. And then suddenly it's like, I turn into a raccoon. Actually, you're a ferret. That's it. Um, so Bron is doing okay. He's He almost lost a cent for a bit, but um, he's He's caught up on it again, um, heading towards where the chests are. Um, I've just sent you a message, Zaymar, as you're, you're heading off on your own. Um, so you're sort of hunting around as well. Um, meanwhile, um, Adelbert, um, <laughs> this moment has passed. What do you want to do? Is it past though? I mean, <laughs> still, still in a warm embrace. Okay. Heart, um, it's a, a fluttering. Eyes are darting for probably different reasons. 
Um, I think, yeah. So we'll continue walking behind Harathia and um, uh, and uh, Princess Minara. I think she's turning to to Baha and saying. You know, you could have made this a lot easier. <laughs> I think I just did make it easier for you, didn't I? Well, yes. Uh, yeah, you, you, you did. Um, You're very hard to read, Baha. So amazing at, at, at your job. That and a myriad of, of, of other reasons, of course. So thank you for making... Oh, I'm thanking you. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, yeah. But, but thank you, anyway. I guess you're welcome, but I hope what we talked about is going to make a change in how we act together right um yes <laughs> I'd like to say I, I, I wear my heart on a sleeve but we both know that would be quite a lie <laughs> um I find this lot and kind of gesture towards um, Herathia. I don't think they quite understand me in in general. Yeah, I get that. So it, it was nice when, um, when when you saw through the mask, <laughs> literally and, and figuratively. Um, on, honestly, Baha, I wear the mask for reason. Things w won't change overnight, but, but I, I will try because 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 you're there helping me along. Thank you. All right, well, as you know, I also have a job to do, so let's talk about this more when we get back. Yeah. It'd be very awkward if I died beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward, yeah. Unfortunate, also. Would be a great loss to the world. Yeah. All right, so um, Harathia, you're you're kind of um, moving along at a fairly uh, sedate pace at the beginning, but you're going to speed up because you're so Princess Mayanara is only five foot four. She's got quite short leg. Um, legs, so she's going to have trouble c keeping up with you if you no, walk at your normal I'm speed. I'm not because primarily I don't know where the princess's luggage is, and I, I figure I'm probably going to have to carry most of it. So I'm taking it easy until Bran signals where where her luggage is, and then we'll head that direction. So I, I will. Okay, <clears> roll <throat> perception. Um, Okay. Six. Uh, it's dark. <laughs> There's lightning and thunder overhead. It's hard to spot anything. Um, currently, um, the princess is fairly quiet. Um, she was in in a bit of a hurry to start moving um, at the end of last session, and that has translated into walking with you quite briskly. 
um, and just keeping her head down. Um, Bran, I assume, um, is uh, on finding the chest going to come running back to you. Um, so you're just going to have to wait until that moment. Is there anything you want to say to the princess while you're walking? Yeah, I reckon so. Uh oh. <laughs> he, he's laughing because this is small talk as far as he's concerned. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, the princess hasn't engaged in small talk with you, so you don't have to. No, I know, but he sort of does. So. Okay. <sighs> Fantastic. <sighs> so, princess. You should probably know that I don't put much stock in royal titles or titles of any kind, if, if you get my drift. But power, I respect that. Now you could have torn through my colleagues here. Well, you did, but you didn't finish them off. Unlike a whole bunch of elves, by your reckoning. I'm kind of curious why that is. She tilts her head and um, her black hair is kind of plastered against her cheek. Um, and she glances sideways at you briefly. And she's got these glowing blue eyes that flash um, with a bit of emotion, um, with an unnatural glow um, in your direction. And then she... she continues to look down as she's walking and she doesn't answer straight away um, she's obviously composing a reply Lord Herathia I was unsure so my actions show that I'm sure of what? Of you and the others. I first came upon you by accident. So you was unsure about us, but you weren't unsure about those soldiers, those elves that you put you. No. What's the difference? I needed time to find out what you wanted. All right. What are those elves want that you put your there? Roll insight. <laughs> it's not going to work. Uh, oh, my, it could be worse. Ten. Um, there's a slight twitch of a smile. Um, on her face, but you find it hard to read why she's amused. Something amused her. Yes. I suppose you do want to know. Which means you don't know them. Am I right? Oh, I know they were soldiers, all right. Have you got some... Has your country got some beef with the rest of you? No. But you... Do you have beef with them? By beef, I assume you mean a problem. I ain't got a problem, man. I do want to know why they're on my land. Most of them are dead now. That's not much of an answer. All right. Let's try something else then. Your ship got a big fucking hole in it and a, and a hull full of dead people. Your people. 
the Julia. Did I make the hole? No, did you kill him? Oh, yes, of course. But they were your, your men. Why'd you do it? They upset me. All right. Mind telling me why? Or how? Perhaps as a warning to you. They laid a hand on me and that is the end. And her eyes flash brilliant blue for a moment and she looks directly at you. I ain't gonna lay a hand on you. Besides, we've got an agreement. Nobody threatens or attacks you. You don't kill anyone. I ain't threatening you, I'm just asking you some questions. You are asking a lot of questions. Well, I thought you sort of posh people like small talk. That normally involves some kind of story. Like, I was in Trillan, you said? I was in Trillan, and did you know they have this amazing store that you can buy the perfect clothes? That kind of story. That might be true. I'm not big on clothes. I can tell. All right. <laughs> Um, I want uh, Elithia and Zaymar to both roll um, investigation. Gonna use my shiny new dice. Oh, investigation? Investigation roll in ages. Let's see. Is That's this an thing? eight. It's a 16. Okay. Um, so, Zaymar, you're going to... I'm not investigating, though. I'm following Bran. Sorry. Yeah, but I wanted it to be a, a competition. Okay. A competition <laughs> role. So, um, Zaymar is going to get the chess first. So, I'm going to deal yeah. with that. Um, right. So... Hopefully, you won't find me dead by the time you get there. <laughs> As you, so, ra rather than send you a direct message, I, I'm going to um, yeah, that's fine. talk to you. So, the... The, there are three chests, as she said. Um, they're kind of... Oh, no, wrong way. They're kind of laying there um, as if they were casually discarded. Um, they're pretty heavy. You can see the indentation in, in the undergrowth. Um, and all three chests have a thick um, calf leather wrap with a lace at the back around it and a massive iron hoop handle through the leather. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and when I say massive, it's like uh, almost a foot in uh, d uh, diameter. And that covers the any clasps or locks or whatever. So they're currently inside this leather uh, wrapping. Okay. Um, Samuel sort of comes up to it and sort of... And then he'll sidle around it <laughs> slowly, just taking it in, all the thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I think I can undo one of the wrappings on the chest and see if I can, uh, if I think I could undo it and then retie it again. So such that it was exactly the way I left it. Okay. Um, so you rolled, a, you rolled a six for investigation, didn't you, Olivia? I did, yeah. So that's kind of, for me, that's like a timing between how long Zaymar has before you arrive. No. Um, so you, you've, got, you've got some time, uh, Zaymar. I'll, I'll start counting down. But, um, yeah. No, it was an eight. It was an eight. Eight in total? <laughs> yeah. Well, chat will tell me if you're lying. <laughs> it was an eight. It was an eight. It was six plus two. Eight. Okay. Um, Zaymar, roll investigation. Okay. Oh dear, sadly, 22, oh dear. So the, the, the back of the um, chests have a, um, an interweaving um, rope through uh, the, this leather holding it in place, but you can untie the rope and unstring it. That would be the way to get the leather off um, the quickest and without any damage. 
Okay, uh, that's what I'll do then. So I will um, do as I said before, um, uh, and I will quick. I will move quickly because I'm aware of the time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that lithium might come up. <laughs> All right. I'm um, good to have around in these situations. Look, you can you can revive me after I get taken out by the traps. <laughs> Talking of which. Um, so the 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 leather um, falls off um, the chest. That, oh, which chest do you go for? There are three chests, <laughs> right? And two of them look very similar. Um, they're a heavy uh, dark wood with iron banding um, and rivets into the iron. Um, however, one chest in particular has a lot of black mist pouring out from any gap so the the lid of the chest has an enormous amount of black mist pouring out oh i thank you for pointing that out straight away <laughs> like, well that, that doesn't have to be the one you approach that can be you can be approaching a different one god i'm like obviously i'm going for the one with the chest so yeah so i will um uh you going I for the one with the black mist or, or not? <laughs> Obviously, yes, yes. I'm going to. I don't know. Yeah. It's not obvious to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so the the chest um, doesn't have um, clasps. It's got a single lock, which is a heavy, large single lock, um, and uh, it looks like there would be a, quite a large key to fit in there, but. Um, mm -hmm. um, Obviously, uh, you're gonna do an investigation for traps. So, do you want to roll that first? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm going to use a luck roll on that. Could you help me with this? <laughs> well, have you bungle it? <laughs> uh, that is a twenty-two on my new roll. Twenty-two. Okay. Um, there is, in the lock, um, three areas where projectiles would be fired. So small needles coming out at three different angles. Um, this would occur if you haven't opened the chest with the correct key. Uh -huh. Okay, so what I want to do is see if I could, um, what I'll do is I'll unlock the chest um, but what I want to do is to get a small pad to mm -hmm. see if I can basically capture the needle. So if I happen to trigger it, I'll catch the needles in this pad. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'm going to use that to then reset the chest afterwards. So yeah. just to be clear, um, what this would mean for unlocking is if you pass the, um, the higher DC, then you won't set off the traps because your lockpick would it would be as if yes. you were using the key. Yeah. Um, if you pass a lower DC that is um, going to let you open the chest um, but set off the traps, then your pad would be in place. So that Am that I would if <laughs> not yet. No. You're all like very the low. Kid in the back of the car. Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> So I've been keeping an eye on chat. I, I don't think anyone has um, purchased inspiration. I just want to double check because I haven't used the stream summary before for stuff like this. There's no... People was that want to see Zaymar get request? got by a trap. That would be way more interesting. Oh, Let me just check I've got the right thing open. Um, I mean, if people do want to save Zaymar, because otherwise we're going to send our pigeon messages out. No. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, um, all right. So no inspiration. So um, yeah. <laughs> First okay, roll. Yeah. Um, roll a. I would say investigation for the um, correct placement of the pads, ready for the needles. So do that one first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, dice is with me today. That is a sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. So that's um, again straps, and then. Um, Roll the actual important roll, the lockpick roll. Oh, 17 again. Uh, that's 22. Amazing. 22. 
But that was uh, sorry. Was that investigation? Or... No, no, no. To, to um, pick the lock. Oh, it's just profi- oh right. So uh, it's what's with that proficiency. proficiency? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's nineteen then. Nineteen. Okay. If that's just a straight proficiency bonus add. Is yeah. That right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> what actually happens? Is as you lean forward and get so you're putting in one lock pick and then a, then two and you actually need three with your fingers sort of splayed out in a um, almost like a spider holding all the, these lock picks in place and you're just about to push um, when you realise that the angle and the um, the direction that you're pushing there's, there's something wrong and the thing you realise is it's unlocked. Okay. I and Alithia back. arrives <laughs> as a, uh, I've got raccoon <laughs> with uh, Bran sort of um, <laughs> quietly. Well, are you going to sneak up or are you going to run run up? I'm not sure. Right how, um, how fast well, is Bran going? Cause that's why I was asking. My, um, if he's going fast, then like, you know, I'm basically following him. Okay, Bran wasn't um, going fast. No, I, I'd sped him up, remember? Yeah, but... We also established you had half his movement rate, so he's he's kind of he's just lolloping along. He's looking a bit disgruntled, sniffing around okay. and not enjoying himself at all, and getting very wet. Right. Um, okay. So okay, the, you you hear them long before you see them because um, they're not trying to hide. Yeah, I'm going at full speed. <laughs> My full speed, forty. Which to be fair, a raccoon probably doesn't make a lot of noise, but um, if I Bran can, isn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, if I can hear that, I mean, basically what I'll do is I will move quietly out round the side of the chest and just sort of lift it open with uh, the edge of my blade. Basically, okay. I'll just use it. Just to All right, so um, you lift it up and, and what I'll do is I'll get it in there and then just use the lever to just lift it up slightly. Okay, there's no um, immediate um, change. Um, you just have the chest lid slightly open as Alithia and Bran come up. Okay, immediately that I turn them, I just basically hold the thing in place, turn around, and then go. I, I chitter at him, and I, like, throw up my raccoon hand like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are again. <clears throat> Alithia. This is under control. One moment, this chest was already unlocked. <clears throat> Please, look. Stop chittering at my back. I'm trying to open this very carefully, and as you can see, there is mist pouring out of it. Just calm down and stop chittering at me, okay? You're not chittering. Stop chittering. Like I'm going to pick up a rock and throw it at you. <laughs> All right, roll, um, roll on an attack. With, uh, it's an improvised weapon, so unless you've got proficiency, which I don't think you, you do, uh, it's just a straight attack roll. However, at disadvantage, because raccoons aren't great at throwing rocks. No, 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 hold on, hold on. What does it say? Um, for raccoons. It definitely doesn't um, say anything about throwing rocks. It doesn't say anything about throwing rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Although no, it's in here, I suppose. It beats weapon finesse. It's not a finesse know. weapon, it's a stone. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing finesse about that stone. I wish I had some more of my mini spears. I'm basically like... Don't, don't throw that That's so don't annoying. Throw it. I got a 20 and a 9. <laughs> I watch it whistle past ineffectually into the jungle, <laughs> I assume. And I'm like, don't throw that. You throw it. Look, I understand. Just look, I'm trying to stay. <laughs> and, then I, and, I, and then I make sure that I'm not like saying stay to Brian. <laughs> Bran has settled down onto his back um, paws, and his his head is just going from Zaymar to Alithia and back again, like it's, it's a game of tennis, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> with a kind I'll, of I'll turn, slight quizzical expression on his face. I'll turn back. Look, I'll, I'll let you know what's inside, and I basically leverage out, have a look inside, and see. Uh, so I'm not going near the the mist. I'll I'll just make sure that I can have a quick look inside. I'm going to climb up and sit on his shoulder. Look. That shoulders for pigeons well. only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're gonna own that. 
<laughs> Nobody make that into a clip, please. Damn it. It's too late. <laughs> Kevin's on it. Um, oh, no. <laughs> no. Um, so as, as the lid flips open, um, you immediately see on a um, dark purple velveteen um, cloak with a, a heavy um, thick fur a trim resting on top of the folds of this cloak is a iron uh, hoop with three keys um, which you assume would fit the chest um, and underneath the cloak you can see there's um, some boxes so there's a, a long box about the, uh, two three foot long um, and then there's a square box about a foot and a half um, and there's a, another box which is more like mm, two foot inside this chest. <sighs> all boxes. And presumably one of these is spewing black mist, is it? They are all... Everything is spewing black mist. So the, um, the velveteen um, cloak with the, the fur is, is spewing black mist. But all the boxes are as well. And now I'm not there, but what about the keys? Oh, sorry. Everything apart from the keys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mind you, it's hard to tell because the keys are on top of a cloak that's spewing. But yeah, evil corrupted keys. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Do we do we still have the Hall of Echoes up? No, that ran out. Um... How far away are we? Yeah, that's run out. Oh, how far away are we from the direction that I know? Harathia's in. Uh, you didn't travel very far, um, and Harathia, Minara, Adelbert, and Baha are heading your, in your direction, so the distance is, is decreasing. Um, they're not in sight, they're not like um, 60 feet away or anything, but they're not that far. Okay. Um, uh, Zaymar shoes <laughs> Alithia off his shoulder um, and steps away towards the jungle. Um, as I do it, I'm going to touch my wrist or whatever, and then I'm going to contact Raffia. Okay. Um, looking around, <laughs> is there any way to hide this? Um, like, is there any way for it to seem like, you know, all this stuff has been plundered? And thrown around and hidden in the bushes. Is there like good places close by? There's a lot of foliage, if that's what you're asking. There's plenty of hidey spots in foliage. More than foliage, like kind of like bits in the ground that are kind of half dug out or whatever, like, you know, hollows that we could cover up. So it seems that the mist is just coming from the ground. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the ground is very rough and uneven. It's also a slope. You're actually climbing up. Well, you, you're not going up the mountain anymore, but you were climbing up a mountain, so there is um, a mountain side to it. So there's plenty of hiding places. So people can see what I'm doing when they're lower down. No, because it's thick jungle, so visibility is very short. Oh. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to message Rathia. Mm, so okay, you can message Rathia, and I'll think on what I want to do. <laughs> Oh, Zaymar's going to keep, be keeping an eye on said squirrely raccoon. <laughs> Want of a better word. Um, right there. It seems that one of these chests is uh, has a number of items of spewing black mist. Uh, the chest was unlocked. You know, I told you not to open it. Look, no. this is fucking serious. It's... Uh... This princess is a bit touchy. Anything happens to a stuff, she might just kill us all. All right, you got that. The reason I got that is because I don't intend to touch a chest that's spilling black mess, but the chest itself was unlocked already. So I don't know whether she intends for us to... It's possible that she wanted to pretend that we had somehow unlocked these things already, but it was already unlocked. So somebody has clearly been at this. I just wanted to warn you. All right. It's also possible as a test, ain't it? Indeed. 
Well, nothing has been touched so far. And I turn around and I will um, flip the um, chest back over and close it again and then retie. <clears throat> As before. Um, whilst he's doing that, can I see if the other chests are unlocked or not? So all the chests are the same. Um, apart from the one that Zaymar has untied, the other two have a thick leather wrap um, with a massive iron bar on top, and they're rope laced at the back. So no, they're not. Um, you'd have to unlace them and then see if it opens. Right. Okay. Which, by the way, is um, not a quick thing to do. Um, no, it's not. Um, and I if you're a like, raccoon. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that in kind of essentially um, two rounds. No. No. I'm returning um, the current. I'm returning the chest to its current. I'm sort of making a mental note of everything that's inside there, and I'm returning the chest exactly the way it was. Um. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just making sure <laughs> that we're good. On Can I investigate <laughs> to, to see if 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 it's if it's um. If it's locked or not, like by looking at the the locks, I just want to know if they're unlocked or locked. That, that's my question. I'm not necessarily going to do anything with them. Uh, you can certainly investigate. Um, so do an investigation roll and let's see what you get. But trying to tell if the chest is unlocked, I'm not even sure. I mean, you. Twenty-one. If you lever it open, you might be able to. But you'd have to have enough strength to to do so. That's the only way I can think. Because the, the lock itself is behind the leather covering. And the leather covering is the whole way across. Yeah, so the, it's, it's hard to describe, but the entire chest is covered by this leather. And then there's a massive iron bar as a handle. Ugh, okay, so they're like impossible to get through too quickly. Because um, mm. you're me. <laughs> um... Uh, okay, <clears throat> fine. Um, I am going to... Has he been trying to shoo me off? Same, Yeah. Yeah, well, like, the thing is, would I be able to tell that they're really difficult to get through on Zaymar's shoulder? Or would I, like, have to go... I shooed you off when I, was turning to, when I was turning to message Harathia, I shooed yeah, you off my like shoulder. Yeah, but that's not like I actually listened to that. Um, has he... <laughs> I can push a raccoon <laughs> off my shoulder. <laughs> I'm like, shoot. <laughs> <Pap>. Clinging. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. Um, yeah, would I, be, would I have to tell? Are you trying to stay on Zaymar's shoulder? Yes. I would, uh, yeah. Uh, I so, was basically going to get rid of you th before I was walking away to, like, message for Apple. Well, roll, roll grapple, um, Zaymar. Me roll grapple. grapple. Yeah. And Alithia, roll um, either athletics or um, strength. So the gra grapple is a, is a athletics check, um, but <laughs> Alithia can roll either athletics or um, acrobatics. Can I roll acrobatics? Uh, yeah, using um, raccoon decks. So it's plus 12 for a, for a raccoon, and I got a 20. 12? Plus 12? Yeah, that's what it says on this. Uh, that's not possible. Awesome. That's what it says. It's a racial modifier. So juggling, no problem. <laughs> anyway, um, so the I'm, I'm going to say that um, Zema, you're basically trying to shoo it off your shoulder, but it's jumping and um, spinning and hooking onto the back and then climbing back on again. So I mean, yeah, if you I'm watch, just my, I just pulled my cloak up tighter around me instead. Then. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're you're still on top of uh, Zemo at this point. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna sit there, like a perch my throne, um, uh, and um, I'm going to like um, point to the because I haven't heard this conversation. Obviously, I'm going to point to the um, chest and then kind of like cover my head up with my hands. Okay. 
So, Zoma, you see the, the raccoon gesture to you. I look blankly at her. And then I, and then I, and then I'm going to go like this several times and he does it to look blankly. You want to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to grab his hood and then cover it, cover his head. <clears throat> Like, like, you want me board. to go to sleep? <laughs> cool. I'm assuming uh, the raccoon. This is all happening stop. while Zaymar is tying up the, the lacing back <laughs> I'm the, uh, the chest. Grab this thing and just like, why? <laughs> why are you still a raccoon? <laughs> you are testing me, like, of all of the. Just, could you not just be not a raccoon for a bit? <laughs> Place her down on the forest. Oh, you're slightly more useful as not a raccoon. Does he manage to do that? Place me down. Oh, it's a. Are you still fighting? fighting? Yeah. <laughs> All right. As Zaymar and Alithia continue to fight, um, let, let's go back to uh, Adelbert. Yeah. So um, you can hear ahead of you that Harathia and um, Princess Mine are having um, a conversation. Um, it's quite two, uh, quite one way. Um, Harathia is asking a lot of questions. Um, the princess is, is happy to either walk in silence or um, try and piss Harathia off. Um, so, <laughs> Adabel, what are you, what are you doing? I am kind of walking along daydream, daydream esque. And as I'm kind of looking at the, the princess, suddenly remember that I, I thought she was a, a child. Um, so I think my pages have fallen out to Jane Wing. Um, I'm going to um, just close my eyes uh, as I walk and uh, message the, the Astravi who I've spoken to, to earlier. Um, and just say, false alarm, it's not an abandoned child, rather an irritable and irritated princess. What do you know of different species of Astravi? She's not like one I, I've seen before. Blue eyes and scales. So your conversation previously about um, the Astravi and trying to get hold of Starak, um, who's another Astravi, um, you weren't able to talk directly to them. Um, you had to um, simply speak to the, the huntress. Yes. Yeah. Yes. However, um, this time you're able to directly contact Starok. He's now close enough to, for you to speak to him. So, in reply, um, you you hear a very cold what from Starak. Starak, my man, how are you? What do you mean, princess? Um, princess Mayanara. What? Where? Oh, gosh, about 20 feet in front of me. I'm afraid you'll have to give me more to go on than just, you know, single words, Starak. Don't go near her. Just hold back. I'm surprised you're still alive, you fool. Right. Um. Hold off. She's with Harathia. I don't want... I can't believe I'm saying this, but I don't want to put him in danger. Um, don't give her cause for attack. Um, Great advice, thanks. And then I... 
I ignore that completely. And I message Herathia. Um, just spoken to Starak. He's surprised Princess is alive, thinks we're all going to die. Interesting. Ask him what's his beef with her. Why was it Serene what had her as his mark? I just I start grumbling at this point because you know <laughs> I am not a delivery boy. Zane was the delivery boy. <sighs> All these people. <sighs> so I messaged Sarek. Apart from what, where you're going to die, what can you tell me about the princess? It's just silence. If I'm going to die, Starek, I'd at least like to know why. Because you're an idiot. <laughs> really? Is that what we're going for? Childish insults? Seems true to me. <laughs> As Harathia would say, What's your beef? <laughs> roll, beef. roll persuasion. Right now. <laughs> oh dear. Good. That is... Persuasion. Did you say something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, four. <laughs> <laughs> that simply wasn't good. Oh, poor other bear. Uh, you just yeah. there's just a chill silence again. No answer. <sighs> and I just turn to Baha and say Be on guard to Staric and he's under the assumption we should all perish imminently. And just look towards the princess. Okay, um, you, Baha, and um, right here, roll insight. <laughs> Six. Uh, thirteen. What did you get? Sorry. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Um, the princess is still very difficult to read. Um. You can see her walking along quite briskly with her out here um, and continuing to talk. There is a brief change in posture, but you're not quite sure what the change was because it's gone so quickly. I message Baha. I'm not sure, but I think she may be listening as well. Roll uh, esoteric. Twelve. That, yeah, there's nothing more really to back up your suspicions. It's quite possible. I mean, obviously, the Astravi have a telepathic communication, so you're not quite sure how that works. So, can I do one thing? Princess Minar. She stops. So. In that moment, what does Sarathia do? I'll stop as well. I can presume that I've heard Adel there. Um, a lot of what he's been saying has actually been my mes by message, so it's been telepathic. Oh, yeah, no, that's not what I mean. 
he's just called out Princess Mayanara. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say that. Sorry, so, yes, you so heard It's that, a yeah. perfectly reasonable thing for her to do to stop, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. So, Rathio, stop and stand sideways so you can see both the princess and that over there. Okay. Um, the princess stops and looks up at you. Um, as I've mentioned before, she's only 5'4", so you're 7 foot. She's got a crane her neck but she, she does look up at you and there's a brief moment when her eyes um, flash slightly and there's this blue glow that's sort of passing over your face um, and then um, she turns to you Adelbert um, and you suddenly get this feeling that you're back in the um, the original conversation you had where you were in an illusion as if you were in a court um, and she, she suddenly looks much more like a princess in refined clothes than a a woman standing in a tatty blue dress. Thank you. I've just been thinking, you said your, your cases are awfully heavy. Well, I don't know if you've seen my companions, um, perhaps excepting Herathia, but we aren't the the sort who can carry such such objects so i shall call in some uh support to to lift them to our ship i see whom a friend of mine staric and i kind of look to see if there's a reaction <laughs> roll, roll uh perception um, Herathia, roll perception. Ooh. Uh, 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 17. Um, um, 9. Alright, um, so from this angle it's very difficult to tell Herathia, but um, Adelbert, you do see... Um, so the, these blue eyes, they have a... Um, I've forgotten what the word is, but there's a, a slight ring around the iris. Um, and I fly shit. No, I'm joking. What's that, sorry? No, never mind. Ignore me. I've made a medic, a medic joke, um, and it's not funny, so I was... Scum. What's the proper, what's the proper name for the, <laughs> the, the ring right on the edge of the eye? Violet? Um, limbus. Limbus. So her limbus um, is a very pale, bright blue compared to the rest of the eye, which is a, a slightly darker blue. Oh, okay. Um, and you see the limbus light up. It's a very subtle change. Um, and in the past, that would have cascaded to the rest of her eye, but she manages to hold it back. So just the limbus lights up briefly as you say the name. It, and it literally lights up at the end of your... So you say Starak, and when you pronounce the K, there's a this mild flash in, in the eyes. And he is strong? Much stronger than I am. I, I have many talents and strength is not one of them. I see. I think one person is not enough, and where? Oh, don't worry. Um, he'll, he'll come with his crew. How many? Gosh, I... How many do you think would be needed? More than one. It kind of begs the question, how did you get how did you get them up here if you killed all your crew? I carried them. Well, if one little waif of a girl can carry three chests, I reckon I can manage them. <laughs> Roll initiative. <laughs> oh. I'm I'm her. She's super strong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. um, Is that me as well, Simon? Uh, it depends whether you want to join the combat. <laughs> You're not currently engaged, but... Um... Yeah, I bet that's a nine. I have nothing left. I'm fucking tapped, guys. How far are we away from this? 
Um, well, they stop walking, so um, you're still a couple of rounds out um, at full speed. Um, so if you want, if you wanted to join in, you'd miss um, two rounds. Well, Alithia would miss two rounds. <laughs> I suppose as a Zayma would be quicker. But, um, okay. Kevin's giving you inspiration. <laughs> hey, I can see that very clearly. <laughs> All right, so you can use inspiration whenever you want to roll advantage. Um, so. um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna message you in um, uh, Discord. Okay. Um, so she, well, I you could potentially use um, advantage for your initiative if you wanted to. Um, so currently she's going first. What oh, she's doing? Yeah. Um, well, she's got six arms, and all six yeah. are splaying out quickly and then driving in with um, the, the bone blades on, on the end of the arms towards you. Okay. Um, well, the problem is that I've, I'm already at disadvantage, so I've rolled twice. So I know what my first roll was, and it's not worth doing. <laughs> so... Um, Oh, I see what you mean. Uh... I know I should have asked meta gaming, but um, unless you get me to roll again. So you rolled at disadvantage, you know that roll, and then the advantage would cancel it. Yeah, it's just the first, yeah. Yeah, that's not going to help. Okay. Um, all right. So there's a 15. So are you giving me armor classes here? Yep. And a 22. Jesus. Okay, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess that's a hit. <laughs> Two hits. Okay. Um, so that's 12 plus uh, 12. So 24 points of piercing damage. <laughs> that would be me gone. Same. <laughs> All right. So, um, just to describe what happens, um, what kind of defence are you m mounting up? So these blades come forwards at a frightening speed. Are you dodging, blocking? What are, What are you doing? That's a good question. Um, can I? Do you mind if I just look at my character sheet? Because there are some things on here. That I've yeah, 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 sure. Um, <clears throat> talking about being tapped out. This is not great. Yeah. Um, While, while we pause, uh, thanks Nova Bender, um, it's very kind of you to say. Uh, please do um, uh, follow us um, if you're interested to, to hear um, what else happens. And the same for everyone, please do follow um, if you can. Oh, yes, thanks. We want, <laughs> <laughs> we want all the follows, <laughs> whatever that means. No. I know anyone can follow, but not everyone will, will they? <laughs> <laughs> we need your follow. I was just being polite. I'm too British sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very glad of anybody who does follow us. Definitely. I, I don't think I can... I thought there was something about dodging, but I can't find it. So I, I There mean, is a dodge action. You can take a well, dodge no, action. I knew there is, but I thought there was something specific to my particular character. Um, oh, I see. Right. So... I think dodging is a sensible move, but I, again, I haven't read through the whole um, player's handbook, so I've got it right here. So uh, if I'm, if I'm the, dodging, is that is, is that basically my attack used to you, dodge? It's an action. Focus, yeah. yeah, yeah. You focus yeah. entirely on avoiding attacks until the start of your next turn. Any attack roll made against you has disadvantage. 
if you can see the attacker. And so dexterity. I, I was actually asking um, for RP purposes, really. <laughs> uh, so the um, the blade is is heading towards you. Um, it sounds like you're going to start dodging. So actually, four of the blades missed. Um, so you you swung one way, you swung the other, and the blades are whistling past your face. Um, and then two strike you hard um, against the. I guess you you're also partly blocking, so you're taking gashes up the arm. Um, in that first turn, uh, that is the consequence. There's 24 points of, of piercing damage. It's now your turn. Um, if it helps any in your decision making, having done those attacks, she stepped back, not out of your um, uh, melee range, but she's stepped back having swung at you and the arms are going back down and she's her eyes are sort of bright as if she reacted quickly and then it's over. Ooh. You broke your fucking agreement, bitch. Right, and I'm attacking her. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Just, as um, I see this, can I roll my... Yeah, go um, for it. To see where I come into the next round. Uh, plus one, I think. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Cool. So, um, which sword are you drawing? Oh, I'm drawing the claymore. Without a doubt. Okay. So, um, Harathia, you 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 reach over and and pull out this blown. Alone, this bone blade, um, which has these weird holes with spikes in all the, all the way up the blade, um, and as you do so, the red turns quickly to white with the black edging that you've seen recently of flames along the blade, um, and all you can hear is a cackling of laughter in your head. Probably not good, but I'm going to try ignoring it. Roll to hit. All right. <clears throat> oh, you normally know make me do a, a wisdom saving throw. I know. Is, yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on, then. Yeah, that could have gone better. Uh, you know, I'll say one thing. Inspiration. But, but, oh, inspiration. Yeah. Inspiration. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the reminder because. Um, um, Don't worry. Uh, yeah, Prathy is looking a little weary, just for anyone watching. Um, it's really playing hell with my, um, well, would be in Harathia, really. So um, that's actually 24. Wow, okay. Um, so as you striked, um, I assume you're sort of bringing the blade and then immediately cutting in one blow. Um, as you do so, her blades come up in defense and she's pretty sluggish as well. Um, and all six of the blades sort of scrape along the bone and try and um, keep it off her, but um, you strike quite heavily, so roll damage. Okay. <laughs> Kevin said my inspiration was to save you, not get yourself <laughs> killed. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Who are you yeah, talking um, to? <laughs> like, what did you think he was? Oh my god. And I'm still not rolling very well, so um, it's, it's nine. Nine. Okay. okay. Um, so I mentioned before um, that her form, um, she has um, these cuts all over her um, body that have these black shadow um, coming out and as you strike um, you cut through the flesh and there's no blood um, and in fact you do cut entirely through her your sword keeps going and the, f the flesh is dismembered and what you're expecting beneath which is bone isn't there. And as you cut through, 
this black shadow that you saw from the cuts that she had on her body um, is just a solid black that um, sort of expands slightly from the form. And then there's a almost a pop, <laughs> a visual pop as she becomes a fully formed human. You did tear through her dress, so she's now got like a, a nasty um, um, cut across the uh, the sleeve. Um, but the rest of her was formless. And now she's a human with the same blue eyes, but only two arms. Two blades? No, Very no nice. blades. No, she's 100% human. With glowy blue eyes. With glowy blue eyes that are bright, um, almost bright white now. They're, they're, they're kind of gone from blue to, to almost white blue. Um, and she's standing up looking furious at you, obviously, but um, she is now human um, in bare feet and not much else. Um, Adelbert, it's your turn. Oh, no, just, can I just say, sorry, um, after I've done this blow, I'm going to step back and put my sword in a defensive position. So, in other words, I'm okay. going to do what Okay. So you're holding up in a in a, a defensive stance. Um, Adelbert, you're you're slightly behind. Um, so you've got a bit of distance to cover, depending on what you want to do. So I'm going to cast Thaumaturgy um, to increase my voice. It's a nice booming level. Hopefully, everyone in the forest can hear. Um, and, and just say, for goodness sake, stop! Um, look at them both. And then, if I can, just kind of. Princess. Haratha was not implying you were not able to, merely that a princess should not have to carry her own cases. Harathia, stop being a dick. Roll. Uh, it's kind of a <laughs> kind of intimidation, but I'm going to say it's up to you. You can either roll intimidation or persuasion. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, Nineteen. Wow. Both intimidation and persuasion are the same, so I think. I suppose it was a form of intimidation without trying to be aggressive. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't have to be aggressive. Um, okay. So, um, Harathia, what, what is your response? I sort of smirk at him a bit. Someone attacks me, I attack him back. I knew you were going to say she started it. <laughs> <laughs> Not in so many words. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is brilliant. Can I respond, or are we can still in initiative? Well, she ha um, so her reaction to you um, is uh, she her head snaps in your direction, um, and the eyes blaze. But the movement is a lot slower than before, um, much more human. And um, as she hears what you say. Um, <laughs> She starts laughing and looks over at Hrathir and says, Don't ever call me that again, Lord Hrathir. Fair enough, Princess, if you don't break your fucking agreements. Indeed, Hrathir. For, for once, act your fight and be the bigger man. I'll, I'll sheathe my sword. I was quite proud of that, and she kind of smiles to himself. <laughs> <laughs> You hear a, a sigh from your sword, a kind of uh, disappoint, oh. disappointed sigh. Um, meanwhile, uh, Zemar and Elithia, you were asking before, where are, where are they and how far are they away? You now know exactly where they are. You just heard this booming voice from Adelbert saying, stop that. I basically stop fighting with Elithia and go, see, see what you've done? And then... <laughs> 
I mean, I'm still on his shoulder, so I'm just gonna like go there. Just like I, sp I sprint off in the direction that they are going in. But what I intend to, yeah, so I am going to go full speed uh, <laughs> to see if I can uh, pace. But what I am not going to do when I get close, I'm going to slow down on the final. So basically, I'll. So you'll cover the distance move. as quick as you can and then slow down. Full move, then okay. I'm going to dash, and yeah. then I'm going to sneak as my final action on at half pace on the final bit. Um, and see what the hell's going on. Okay. But I'm going to sneak on that final bit and hide. So yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, um, Mads. Fine, it's fine. I know I my, my my headphones went all funky for a second. Hmm. You're getting a free ride, basically. So I get it faster. <laughs> Frathi is going to say to the princess. Let's get this straight. When you say you're not going to attack people who don't threaten or hurt you, that means anyone. I ain't got time for such, I don't know, thin skins. She's still sort of half laughing from um, Adelbert's interjection. Um, and she looks up at you. Lord Arathir, I think I like you. <laughs> this was fun, but don't order me around. I'm just reminding you of your obligations. We'll see. <laughs> now, shall we find my things? Um, do I see any of this? So yeah, yeah, that conversation would probably be the moment that you started sneaking and approaching. So you see the two of them facing each other, um, not not moving and having a conversation. However, Princess Mayanara um, is looking very different. Um, her arms are normal, um, and her dress appears to be even worse uh, shape than it was before. I step out of the uh, undergrowth but, um, <laughs> with a bloody raccoon on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> God knows where Bran is. Um, and, uh, well, we have found the chests. You didn't say anything about mist. Nod to, like, support him. <laughs> her eyes sort of flick to the raccoon on your shoulder and, and you can see her brain sort of processing, oh, yeah, that was the raccoon that is a lithia kind of thing. Um, and then she looks back at you. Missed, you say? Indeed. Somebody has been at your chest as well. Perhaps you can watch. Come this way. We'll see. And I turn around and walk off ahead, back in the direction of the chests. Okay. Um, she turns I to her up here. And you do it what, sorry? Uh, I'll do it loudly so that, so that she can see. Okay. I'm like making a path through the jungle so that she'll be able to see the, the trees moving as I sort of walk away. But basically what he's doing is he's putting a little bit of distance after treating her quite tersely. <laughs> he just wanted to back her out here on this one, basically. But he didn't want to do it such that he's putting himself in too much danger. <laughs> she is currently looking up at Harathia with one eyebrow raised and she's still got this some um, sort of half smile. Um, but her eyes do blaze slightly. Shower your majesty or what are, what are they called princesses anyway? Who gives them? Your majesty will do fine. And she turns and walks yeah. off. Do oh, I hear that, by the way? Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, That's they're talk talking talking normally. So. That's cool. I, I need yeah. to know these things. Okay. Um, as she walks with you, Harathia, towards um, the direction that Zaymar left, um, she glances back over her shoulder at you, Adelbert, um, and gives you a flash of a smile um, that again sort of reminds you of how young she is. She's, she's only in her early 20s. Um, and most of the time she has a quite straight face, but there's just these moments when she um, she shows her true character. Um, and it's a smile of like, I know what you did. Um, and almost not thank you, but uh, she appreciated it. 
I, 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 I nod um, just in response and recognition. Okay. So as you arrive at the chests, um, say, Mara, are you going to do or say anything? Yes, I'll wait for them to arrive and then I'll okay. uh, turn around and try to look cool as I can with a bloody raccoon on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I've got my rapier in my hand, uh, so I'm going to use it to gesture. Um, but I don't, I'm not doing it in a threatening way. Hmm. So this chest here, as you can see, is spilling mist. Is it something that you were carting around in these things? This is like this jungle. This strange mist on the floor. Ah, so perhaps you were carrying some kind of magical items. Mm, perhaps. Hmm, that would make sense. We have noticed that when uh, there is some kind of... I want to call it a heartbeat, but some kind of disruption that causes the mist, then items can get corrupted if they're within a short distance away. Whatever it is, uh, you can actually see. And I'll look, I'll basically gesture without actually going down. You can see that the chest has been unlocked. The chest been, has been what, sorry? I'll say the chest has been unlocked. Is that your ding? Did you leave it unlocked? So, as I mentioned before, the, the leather covering does go over the chest. It's very hard to see if it's yeah, locked I or unlocked. I know. <laughs> okay. I know. I'm just double checking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm just basically bullshitting the fact that I could, that I'm that good. <laughs> okay. Um, roll persuasion. Persuasion? Surely deception. <laughs> Um, oh, it's persuasion for a try. reason that you don't know. Okay, all right, all right. I'm um, okay, 12. That's 12. Not okay. Um, yes, Matt? I'm going to climb off and then I'm going to... Is, is um, Bertie close by? Uh, yeah, everyone's in a group, I would say, at this yeah, point. So I'm going to go up to Bertie and, like, tug on him as if, like, I want his attention. Okay, hold, hold that thought. Let's, um, <coughs> let's finish off the uh, chest. Um, so, having said that to Princess Mayanara, um, you see the eyes flash again, um, and she concentrates, looking from where she's standing, which is still ten feet away from the chest, um, and you see that blue glow pass over the, the chest. And then she looks over at you. Yes. You leave it unlocked. Yes. Okay. I feared that the elves had got to it beforehand, and that your belongings had been taken. I am appreciative of your concern. Well, it's not necessarily your concern, it's my concern. If I'm tasked with something, then I do not wish to be, let us say, uh, unfairly uh, tarred with the brush that it could be me who has stolen from you. So I wish to bring this thing to your attention at the earliest convenience. You speak in very long sentences. Um, so while that conversation is going on, Alithia, um, you are uh, trying to get Adelbert's attention. So I like tug on his uh, trousers. Uh, I look down, smile. And, and message again. Guess who has a boyfriend? <laughs> do you do the head thing as well while you're messaging? <laughs> yeah. um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a raccoon thumbs up and um, uh, a big raccoon smile, um, um, and um, and then I'm gonna say. We'll, we'll chat about it over supper. I think this needs more time. Uh, message me again. I, I, 
I roll my eyes but smile. Um, the floor, very literally, is yours. <laughs> Two things. One is that Algernon was here, wasn't he? Algernon. Algernon? Algernon. 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 <laughs> Both Chris's are here. correcting uh, Alithia, but <laughs> Alithia no, doesn't know how to pronounce right, Algernon, right. and you can't hear her. <laughs> no, no. You're right. <laughs> So Sorry, Algernon was, um, um, uh, was here, and then there was that pulse and heartbeat, and then things got corrupted. Is he doing this? Is it that magic is okay on its own? Two things. What is going on with her eyes? Do I know? Yeah. That's three things. Um, roll uh, <laughs> Arcana. <laughs> Okay, that is... Hold on, I don't know what my arcana is off the top of my head, I should. Sorry, I think it's a plus two, because it's an intelligence. Um, yeah, so that would be 18. You are aware of various um, magics, um, abilities that are to do with sight. Um, she obviously has normal um, sight to a degree, but the... The, the flashes of the eyes, you would guess, um, are something to do with a additional ability with sight. Um, mm. You're not sure what that ability is, but mm -hmm. you think it's something. Anyway, um, and you, it's magical. Yeah, it's definitely magical. Um, so you asked Adelbert a couple of questions as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so dinner would be, be lovely. Um, I can't recall the order in which the boy uh, and the pulse occurred, but from what uh, Herathia and Zima have said about him, um, yes, he and corruption go, go hand in hand, though from, from my brother's memories, at least he didn't know anything. And finally, of course magic isn't of itself evil. I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful, and I'm, I, I do magic. And, and so are you, of course. I don't do magic. I channel the power of the gods. Wait, I can't say that. <laughs> Never mind. You probably would be because it's me messaging you. Oh and yeah, 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 I would. Yeah. I don't do magic. I channel the power of the gods. And, and magic is they... bad, and it's bad. Okay. Magic goes by many names. I don't think anything is inherently good, bad. It's how it is understood and how it's perceived and how it's used. My my magic, I could certainly use it for, for evil, for, for dark purposes, but I, I choose not to. Um, I would argue that the, the power the gods give you is they allow you to access flows of energy, flows of magic that surrounds us in the world and manipulate that so in a sense that is a form of of magic that magic gets corrupted and that All things like, can get good corrupted. things don't get corrupted look at the jungle around you is the jungle evil is the jungle it is cruel? now It is now because of the corruption, but, 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 but previously, it was itself. Anything can be corrupted, and as I said, anything can be used for, for good or for, for evil. We all have that power. We all have that choice within us. It, it's what we it do. Why is banned? With... Why is magic banned? Because a group of grumpy 
old men decided so many years ago. No, I think it's bad. And like, it causes harm and it hurts people. Do I hurt you, Ellie? No. Can't say the same in reverse. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> but you know that I channel magic. You've but seen you me could. do it. That's a thing. You could. Exactly. And so can magic be, if it is used in such a manner. I think it's too dangerous. Why don't... I have some wonderful books on this subject, the philosophy of magic, of good and evil. When, when you come to dinner, let's, um... No, 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 Din dinner is about your boyfriend. We could have many dinners, darling. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I can get people to cook. It, it's fine. And anyway, okay. but All right. I think... <laughs> <coughs> um, meanwhile, Zemo, you were talking to um, Princess Mayanara. Um, and she just rudely said that you were using very long sentences. I do. And then I sh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back to Adelbert. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, I would... I'm going to sort of... Uh, see what she thinks about this so um um do, what do i think on the the chest do i think it's something that i could pick up or because uh, i'm not aware that Sturrock's <laughs> on his way so i'm sort of moving my way over to one of the other chests we'd probably sort of sizing up we'd probably call them trunks in the uk it's right. huge um and normally you'd need two people to carry it if it was the size of, of these chests. But these chests are also banded with iron, so they are super heavy. Um, right. So, so I'm yeah. going to go over to this, and to, to one of the chests that's not spewing black mist. Okay. And I'm going to look at it and sort of, well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to need to at least craft something to drag this through the bush. Um, I can't see that we're going to move these with any great speed through this jungle. Right. Well, I think he wants to try picking them up then. All right. <laughs> Which one? Uh, well, the, the two that aren't being black mist, preferably. Okay. Roll well, first. I step, I step back and go, be my guest. Uh, that's one. You can carry both. Oh. Well, okay, I'm going to try one with one one arm. <laughs> okay. Do you know, disadvantage is a bummer, it really is. Okay, well, let's give that a go. Um, so that's 14. Yeah, so you, you managed to get your hand under it and lift it up. Um, a foot or so at an angle um but to move it as well is currently um a problem with one arm hmm. I'll put it down i'll and I'll, I'll i'll look over at the princess you know a bit of, catch your eye at the a, time. A, bit, <laughs> a bit of it you know a slightly impressed look on his face how do you move all three of these? Go on. Really? She's got this <laughs> cheeky grin, um, and her, her eyes are sort of a, a dark blue, um, looking up at you. Heavy, aren't they? Yeah, they're heavy. You just magic through it, didn't you? So these friends, and she turns to Adelbert, how long? Um, I will ask them how quickly they can be here. What friends? 
we meet the elves or something? No. Staric. Who else do you think can carry these things? I don't know. The jungle seems to be full of random elves running around all over the place and flying creatures with six arms and direwolves and raccoons. I have no idea. It could be just about anything at this point. My, my question, Majesty, before I call them, you recognize Staric's name. And I want to make sure if, if we call him, things will be okay. I'm very much looking forward to meeting this Staric. <laughs> Hello, Bear. Smiles. That's slightly what I'm afraid of. I look over at Alicia. <laughs> it's like, and I'm like wagging my. <laughs> Finger <laughs> um, no I'm gonna like hang Starek. on. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I know I hate Starek. <laughs> I'm wagging. I'm already like looking over with a stern gaze um, and like. I'm I'm gonna tug on um Adelbear's um uh, uh trousers again. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, Eddie. Ask her how she could turn into a, um, a Stravi with the wings and the blades and stuff. Perhaps over a glass of wine, she, um, I don't just push her too much. Okay. And I kind of smile and nod. I said I meant to dehill it, I was talking. I said, yeah, okay, she can kill us. I smile. And then message, uh, call up to, to Staric. We need your help. If you come, would you and your friends be able to refrain from slaughtering the princess? <coughs> There's no answer. Everyone roll perception. Rat. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> Nine with a disadvantage. Nine. Um, uh, fourteen. Okay. Um, so the only person who sees this is a raccoon who's currently <laughs> at the feet of Adelbear, occasionally tugging Adelbear's trousers in order to communicate. Um, however, I guess as you're a raccoon and unable to directly join in with the conversation, you've, you've got the time to look around and keep your eye out. Um, the jungle canopy above you is, um heavy um, dark green leaves covered in water um, falling down on your face and beyond that are the the dark clouds and the, the occasional flash of thunder um, and there's a brief moment when there's a flash of lightning a sheet lightning that goes across the entire sky and as the lightning lights up the sky you see black shapes hanging above you um, and there are so many of them. Ten, Can I, do I get, twenty. Do I get an idea of how many? Thirty. <coughs> and okay, as you're I'm looking up, I... you just see um, these black shapes. They have wings and bodies that are now plummeting towards you. I'm go I'm gonna like whilst they're plummeting, I'm gonna like I'm gonna tug frantically. Um, uh, on the trouser. I'm going to tug and point. Oh. <laughs> Did you see them? 
Um, yeah, Adelbert, um, you do immediately see them as well. Um, Horatia and Zemo, you can also respond as you see um, Adelbert looking up into the sky, if you wish. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll look up. But then, you know, we're all going to be looking up. This <laughs> gives any... It's, way, it? it's in a um, brief moment of uh, time that um, you see humanoids with... Um, bat-like wings um, and very tall seven-foot muscular bodies um, covered in a thick um, leathery uh, skin um, with six arms and blades on each arm plummeting down towards you and they all land on their knees in the forest in a circle around you, uh, with Starrock um, slightly in front um, and close to you, Adelbert. Um, and each one that lands, um, they come down with a last minute using their wings as a windbreak and then slam into the dirt um, with a thud. Um, and Starrock, having landed right next to you, Adelbert, sending up the dirt, um, raises Do his I head. Why did land next to me? Uh, yeah, I guess, but on the other side of Adelbert. So there's, the there's you, Starrick. then Adelbert, then Starrick. Do I see that it's Starrick? Yeah, you recognise Starrick, yeah. I I don't know how raccoons are aggressive. I've never actually met Chittering at them, I believe, is what you were doing at me. <laughs> no, 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 that's when they're annoyed. I'm going to, like, literally kind of, I don't know, I guess like a cat? Yes. Because I probably, yeah. Do. yeah. Um, so I'm gonna like kind of go onto all fours, and then I'm gonna like arch my back and go at um, at um, uh, at Sarek. All right. There's a brief moment when he was about to um, say something to Princess Mayanara, and he just glances across at this raccoon, <laughs> and there's, there's this brief moment of confusion on on this uh, face, and then gonna... and then he looks up at the princess and says. Princess, and bows his head, and that is where we'll end the session. Wait, before we end the session, um, I wanna, I wanna chuck a rock. Uh, no, no, we're we're ending the session there. Sorry, you'll have to hold that thought for the for next time. Yeah, the entire week. Yeah. Didn't we clear it that raccoons can't raccoons can't chuck rocks? She's gonna be like. Um, just <laughs> dropped it behind me trying to throw it. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> well, we survived <laughs> another amazingly. <laughs> Thank god. Oh my god, oh I my thought goodness, we were gonna mate. die. Oh hey, we're getting raided! Oh nice. Oh my goodness. Hey! Thanks Hello, for everyone. joining! Yeah, you just missed us raid, raid, raid. dying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He just oh, missed us not dying, which was great. Uh, but yeah, Parathia very nearly died. <laughs> was... uh, he wasn't even close to dying. I'll yeah, it was just a scratch. It was just a scratch. <laughs> just, uh, it's just a flesh and, wound. And notice him attacking her was what got rid of her extra four arms and things. So <laughs> that's done good. But as usual, it, it was out of bed who came to the rescue for everyone. Oh my god. <laughs> It's Just true, saying. it's true. I would like to point but out that I did nothing of the reason. sort. What did you do? <sighs> Good grief. What did you do yeah. nothing of? I did nothing of any kind of attacking anybody. I just managed to make sure that I was me. not the one. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm not sure who started it. Though. Pesky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pesky bloody raccoon climbing all over me. Hi, Barty Dice. Uh, hi, Mike. Thanks so much for thanks joining for Thanks for joining us. Uh, Barty Dice is yeah. a, a great stream on, th on Thursdays, um, Fates United. Uh, check it out. It's really cool. Good. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so, um, <sighs> Mike, we've just uh, arrived at the point where we're going to ask questions. So um, if anyone has any questions in chat, then please do um, goodness, post, me. and I'll do my best to spot them or... <laughs> More likely, everyone else will spot them, um, and I'll ask them. Um, so, first question is for Matt. Adelbert finished last session saying that the mask is off. 
how much will that change him when he's not with Baha? I think as he, he said to Baha kind of today, um, the mask is, is there for a reason. It's been there for a long time and it's not going to disappear overnight. I think with Baha, he'll try to be more uh, more open. Mm. But um, I think I wonder what impact it may have, if any, on interactions in the greater world. We shall see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. No more flirting with lords and ladies. Oh, no. To be continued. Well, <laughs> well. Um, all right, question for Mads. Um, I'm sure you're dying. Oh, you did though. Uh, well, it's still it's still a valid question. I'm sure you're dying to interrogate Adelbert about what happened back in the jungle. Um... <coughs> well, I haven't properly. I haven't properly. I just know he has a boyfriend, and um, uh, essentially, there's more to come from that. I don't want to give it away, but like. <laughs> um, the way Alethia is, she's happy for him, um, but her opinions on Baha are uh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Question for Mr. Roberts. Um, what does Harathia think about workplace relationships? <laughs> well, he doesn't actually know just yet. Um, <laughs> So I think you might have to just wait and find out. <laughs> oh my goodness me! This is as long as it doesn't involve pulling a bloody sword out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a question for Mr. Harris. What does Zaymar think about workplace relationships? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me! Um, right, so. He has absolutely no idea what a workplace relationship is. <laughs> so he has very often had to um, do a work, fake a workplace relationship. Um, and that's about as far as, yes. So um, many times uh, before uh, in his past, uh, there will be situations where he has had to fake a, um, a relationship with somebody else <laughs> um, and in order to get what he wanted. Mm. Um, so he can't really understand it beyond that. It's like Wait. every work, it's like every workplace um, relationship is something that he decides to be really. <laughs> Wait, so, workplace go. relationship or workplace like romance? That's what I want to know. The second one. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> but in that way, he still is going through the motions. <laughs> They're like Sherlock and Janine. He's, he's, well, he's always interested in other people's relationships. He just doesn't get a, a handle on it, really. So he can mimic um quite well and he's obviously incredibly studied at watching what people do and seeing so yeah he can flirt probably better than Adelbert <laughs> if it comes down to it <laughs> but like is it real no uh so yeah <laughs> all right um In it, most people could flirt better than Adelbert <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Question for Matt. It's beautifully awkward. Um, question for Matt. Um, what was going through Adelbert's mind as Baha came clean? Honestly, at, at first, it was um, before he'd actually said anything. It was, oh gosh, he's noticed he's going to tell me to be more professional. He's going to tell me to, um, you know, maintain boundaries and stop being so childish, which is why he was kind of just trying to get away as quickly as possible. So to then have it recognised, 
and the business person, he he noticed everyone who kind of who wasn't there in that in the initial kind of period. He noticed twinkles in the eye. He noticed admiration, but he kind of just assumes that from everyone because he's ridiculously good looking and wonderful and and, and, and perfect. But he doesn't think anyone could need anything or want anything deeper than that. So he was he was really quite surprised in, in a good way. Okay. Um, and sort of connected to that, um, to do with Adelbert's ego, question from Kevin, Celtic Stupid. Um, how is Adelbert's ego following the princess's acknowledgement of his contribution? Well, it was about time, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm the only one treating her how one should treat a royal, saving everyone. So I think the recognition was kind of her fi- him recognizes she finally acknowledges his place in the um, in the gang. Karathia may have the title and brawn, but um, Alderbear is the you know the string that ties it all together. Right. The gilded silk that ties it all together. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, question for Matt: um, Is Alithia frustrated when she's a raccoon, and there's talk to be had with a princess? Are you? Um, okay, so, um, Elithia, no, um, because that princess is effing terrifying and she does not want that princess any way of getting annoyed or, like, seeing her as anything more than, like, this bumbling, you know, furry forest critter, um, because, you know, typically that's something that you don't get too annoyed about unless mm. you're the same um, uh, but, um, <laughs> um, uh, but, um, uh, in terms of me as the character, I'm so frustrated. I don't want to be a raccoon. I want to like talk with the princess. Um, but it wouldn't be in keeping, like, especially given the fact that Alyssia has been taken out twice. She's very, very wary and she doesn't like, she's kind of in like, almost a comfort safety sort of thing mm. um, uh, and she feels like almost she's going incognito uh, but I want to like have these tense conversations and so on and instead I am stuck without words making kind of you know faces at Zaymar huh? <laughs> huh? making stupid faces at Zaymar yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant this question has even more significance <laughs> after this session uh, Mr. Roberts Harathia succeeded in standing up to the princess and perhaps gaining equal footing in her eyes. How important is that to Harathia? It's massive. Absolutely <laughs> enormous. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, I mean, Albert often goes on about like Harathia is just, just all brawn and no brain. Well, he's got an awful lot of brawn and if people don't respect it, then they're going to feel the force of it. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to stand there while, while, while some five foot nothing, you know, admittedly killing oh. machine stabs me. <laughs> 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 um, he's going to give some of it back. And he, he's, he's restrained enough to do the same thing that she did. In other words, attack and, and pull back. But he couldn't, he couldn't just take it and not do anything because... Mm. That would be like being a, 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 I don't know, a punch bag or something. It's yeah, that was like, bad. that was like absolutely amazing. I have to say, it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> as a, as a player, like so thinking, hard to do that. Yeah. yeah. As a player, I was thinking, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, to go in there and do something where you're just like, this is gonna be. Yeah, no, it's brilliantly played, brilliantly played. <laughs> All right. Um, similar theme, Mr. Harris. What was going through Zaymar's mind as he held out the necklace? Ah, oh, dear. Um, so, when he held out the necklace, he was pretty sure that. I mean, it was basically what a move of desperation, essentially. Mm. Um, and the thing is, is that he's normally pretty sure, like when he does things. So it's like the fact that. It was basically run away and hide, okay, which he could have done. Um, 
or every now and again he does do he just gets the hmm, you know what this might work and we saw that this evening with the chest you know <laughs> it's kind of like probably should leave that alone <sighs> you know so he does have these moments i wouldn't say it's sort of reckless but it's kind of like he needs every now and again he needs to get things done and he will put his life on the wet on the line but only in such a way as if he has planned it all out hmm. or he has a good like he's like i've i've thought this this is a good bet to make so it's rather than gambling right where you're rolling the roulette for him it's more like a stock trade or something like that it's like i've done my research on this company this should pay off but it's a gamble and when the mm. stock rises or whatever he gets a like a massive kick out of that but because he's right not because <laughs> it was the gamble so yeah. same thing with this and like doing stuff like that it's kind of like yeah, he, he he does seek the thrill, even though it's just when he doesn't have anything planned out, he's like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, a question from Celtic Stupid um, related to the ego one. Uh, what was every party member's thoughts in character when Harathia and the princess started coming to blows? Starting with you, Adelbert. Um... I think it was more frustration than than anything that that acting like children he could so clearly see what had happened um Herathia had said uh called I think he used the word a waif um and she was just demonstrating that that she can take care of herself um and it's like him going into kind of separating two you know, overexcited terriers. Um, it's just more just frustration that, for goodness sake, children. <laughs> okay. Um, Alithia, I, I guess... Um, I didn't know. You didn't I know at the time. Yeah, but as a, play like, as a player, what, were you, what did you think? <laughs> Um, so as a character, obviously, I didn't know. As a player, I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> he's going to have to roll a new one because um, uh, I have nothing. And I'm not leaving this fucking raccoon. <laughs> like, I die on this raccoon hill. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, so I guess she was thinking about... Well, I was thinking about um, how I could potentially swipe some good berries from um, from Zaymar, because mm. you know Alethi was sitting atop Zaymar, um, and so then I could like shove some into his mouth and then bring him back. But yeah, that would all depend on whether he's stabilized, whether she just kind of crits him when she's dead, when he's down. Yeah, so much there, and I was just like, yep. Okay, new character. Maybe Zaymar will be head of the Golden Leaf Gang now. <laughs> that would be a terrible idea. <laughs> Zaymar would not want that role. <laughs> um, I, th I think this question, question is just as relevant for Harafi. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, as, a, as, a, as a character, it was, nobody does that to me, you know, and, and gets away scot-free. Nobody puts baby no, in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take her down. Basically, going through his head. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, obviously, as a, as a player, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna take her down. But um, as, as, a, as, a, as a character himself, he's he's got utmost confidence in himself. If nothing else, that's that's him in a nutshell. So. Um, yeah, he, th he thought he was going to take it down. All right, and uh, same, our same question. Uh, yeah, so um, I'll start with the uh, what did I think as a player? Uh, I was just like, oh my God, he's going to have to have a go at her. <laughs> and I was just like, don't like, I, and I was like, if I was in that player situation, I would really struggle like to make that decision. And you nailed it. I was just like, wow, you went for it. I was just like, oh my God. 
Um, Zaymar had a plan. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so he was, he's already been, like I say, he, ever since the whole thing's been kicking off, he's been plotting various things and sort of doing plan A, plan B, plan C. And so he was quickly rifling through about like a whole bunch of things that he was going to do um, to the point where I'd like make notes. <laughs> it was like, and it was just like, right, which one are we going to execute under this condition? And it was, yeah, so he had a plan, but I'm not really into what those were. It was basically depending on various level of how much shit hits the fan would <laughs> depend on the severity of the action so yeah mm. yeah right. it was amazing uh question for matt um adalbert obviously likes the finer things in life but how comfortable is he in courtly society hmm really good question um probably less comfortable than he thinks he is i think he is to twist and to put on the airs the graces you know show he deserves that deserves mm. to be there deserves to fit in but as kind of was very evidently shown last session um he doesn't quite he he gets called boring and then as soon as that kind of facade is um lifted that's when kind of the self-doubt comes in i'm the boring i'm the boring so i just see a lot less than you probably like to think he is interesting okay um question for mads um alicia has been wild shaping quite a lot recently after not really doing so much, um, as much, what has changed? Um, has she been wild shaping a lot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, um, I suppose it's a couple of things. One, it is that there's a circumstance for for it. Mm. Uh, the the um, another thing is is she tapped with everything else because like wild shape at the moment for her is limited because she's stuck as that animal and animals aren't typically as strong as adventurers um, <coughs> so there's that um but then there's benefits to being certain animals um and uh so there's that so is she being tapped um is there anything else um is there a circumstance that's like useful for it you know like hiding um mm. and not being found out for human um and i suppose um like with wild shape it's kind of her place of comfort a little bit like animals she gets people harder to over animals they're they make sense they, they act in like sensible ways they don't do weird kind of social hierarchies and niceties and tactics and whatnot and yeah um so i think that's part of it is just like her mm -hmm. place to go when she's feeling um when she's feeling bad essentially yeah all right uh question for mr roberts how does Herathia feel about having a gang member that can appear like any creature they want well it's a new experience <laughs> Like a lot of so many things that have happened in the last few months, sort of game time. Um, yeah, he, he's, 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 he's sort of not quite sure what to make of it. it, it it's like, oh, there's another thing that, that she can do. And, and admittedly, he, he, you know, he knew she could change shape, but there's all these different shapes coming up. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like, what, what do I do with this? So at the moment, it's like he's just sort of half ignoring it. <laughs> He's just sort of go, going with it and pretending it's completely normal, even though, you know, it's it's a little bit unusual. Mm. All right. Um, question for Mr. Harris. Would you say Zaymar was in his element negotiating with the princess or were the pointy blades too distracting? 
Um, they were very distracting. He's not normally used to negotiating under such extreme conditions, but um, put it this way, he'd rather he was, if it comes down to any of this lot negotiating or it's him, he's going to pick him every single time. <laughs> <laughs> and he is just at least massively glad that Alithia is a raccoon and can't actually interject in his in his uh, <laughs> in the number of times he's been trying to negotiate and Alithia has been but I think this <laughs> and he's hey, like no I was awesome with the Empress She's the best friends with me I didn't I, di I didn't I did not say that he was not mistaken <laughs> <laughs> That's what he believes. <laughs> it's like, but, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, exactly. No, you do an amazing job, and I think it's incredibly funny when you interrupt Zabar. Hilarious. He deserves it. Um, <laughs> it's like any of that stuff is is brilliant um, from a player's point of view, because otherwise you just end up being the boring, stuffy like person. You know, you don't have that like comedy one two where you've got the. <laughs> You know, uh, so yeah, I think we get great comedy out of it. But um, yeah, from Zaymon's point of view, he's just kind of like, no, look, just stop. Don't even, don't even open your mouth. This is my domain. I can, I've got this handled. He's like the yeah. equivalent. It's like that for the, the equivalent of Rathia. That was great interaction. It was really good. Uh, but it, I mean, it's just slightly mirrored, isn't it, by by Rathia and, and Adolf there, yeah. the brawn and the, and the brains and and. The thinking that, that that your way is the best, and yeah. uh, you know, all the time. Yeah, no, I agree. There's just like a hilarious, like there's a hilarious one-two combo going on there, where Zayn's trying to he's playing the straight guy basically every single time, and then Alethius just coming along and just cut, undercutting everything he does. Uh, dear, it's brilliant. Uh, yeah. All so, right, no, I love it. Question for Matt: um, You mentioned Adelbert didn't want to mess his shoes up in the jungle. How much does he hate it? <laughs> Missing his shoes up or the jungle? Both. <laughs> um, I think a lot of Alibar is how he comes across, how he appears. So having, you know, ripped shit, silks, muddy shoes mm. um, it, it is frustrating because they're all terribly expensive and hard to source. He tells them he just... <laughs> they're probably not. Sorry. Um, in terms of the jungle itself, he doesn't mind the jungle. There's... As he's kind of saying to Ellie earlier, there's so much beauty in, in nature, in the the essence of things. And as he's saying, it's true, you know, the jungle is not inherently evil. There are things that do evil within it. Uh, creatures and, and plants but at the same time there's, there's a lot of, of beauty mm. and he he enjoys one of the things he likes in, in Trillin is kind of going off uh, with a book and just kind of sitting in, in, in the jungle listening to the, the soughing of the trees, the, the birds and the monkeys and kind of just that period of realisation taking his, his sketchbook out what he doesn't like is having to to run and get and get sweaty and feeling disgusting. So it's nothing against the jungle itself. That's wonderful. We like jungles. Um, when he when he comes when he comes back, does he get a kick out of being like I've been on an adventure? <laughs> Just like people know that he's been on an adventure. Does he get a kick out of that? <laughs> the adventures themselves. It's just more, you know. I have a purpose. All right. Um, question for Matt. You see me come back from the adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alithia's come a long way years. with Bran. How does she feel about that relationship? She's so happy. She's so happy about that. Like from day one, she was like, "Oh my god, look at this big fluffy puppy!" Um, uh, and um, and then Bran like was not interested, and was actually kind of aggressive. Um, and the fact that like they can play and like Bran is okay with her and she can cheer Bran up. Like, um, I know that it's Karathia's pet or companion or whatever, but like Bran is her friend. <laughs> don't, don't call him a pet. 
<laughs> that's a good recipe for getting your hand bitten off. I think, I think she could get away with it. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like, you know, Bran is her friend, um, uh, and that is wonderful for Lethia. Like, like, yeah, she, 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 she's like, in terms of friends in the Ruined Heap, number one, um, Adelbert. Uh, number two, um, uh, Galilla, <laughs> and number three, Bran. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, Mr. Roberts. Uh, I've, got, I've got to point out, though, to Chris, that there was no four or five in that list. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like the person I met at the gate, uh, that nice lady who served me fish the other day. There's... Uh, the, the seagull that I said hello to on the way in. <laughs> um, question for Mr. Roberts. Um, does Harathia often meet someone more lethal than him? Well, um, a session not that long ago, but possibly before we started streaming, um, Harathia had a go at Alithia. Um, but part of what he said was that she's the most dangerous person in the group. So, he, you know, he, he's able to acknowledge that sort of thing. Um, that doesn't mean to say that he doesn't think he could take her. <laughs> you know, in a fight, by the way. Um, but, so, so the, the question is, has he ever met anyone more lethal than himself? Does he often meet someone more oh, lethal? Well, I guess sometimes, although, you know, you know it's a, the acknowledgement of that is, is, a, is a funny sort of thing because, um, you know, clearly this princess is, is, is extremely lethal, but he hadn't seen it mm. in action. But the, the, so there's nothing to stop him testing it out. I mean, even if he had seen it, he probably still would have, you know, had a go at her. Mm. Um, and Alithia is dangerous, but he still thinks he could take her, even if she's more dangerous than him, because she'd take out 100 people in just a few rounds quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's one on one, that's slightly different. Um, so um, he does occasionally meet people that are lethal, possibly even more dangerous than himself, but he still thinks he can take them. All right. Um, and final question from Chaotic Stupid. Um, for both um, Zaymar and Adelbert, are either of them secretly curious about, um, and have they had any thoughts about experimenting with the Black Mist in more controlled circumstances? Do you want to go first, uh, Matt? Matt? Uh, yeah, so I suppose not experimenting in it, with it in terms of how can I manipulate this how can i develop it and use it but a lot of Annabelle's work and kind of probably one of the the only reasons Rathia keeps him around is because he has ways of dealing with corruption dealing with dealing with the mist and those sorts of things and he loves it to kind of explore more why why the why the mist came about uh what is it? What causes it? How does it spread, etc.? So, in that sense, experimentations absolutely. In terms of, can I take this corrupted leaf and turn it into a bioweapon? Uh, perhaps not. Right. <clears throat> um, okay. <laughs> so, with Zaymar, he's pretty sure. Or people keep telling him that he's corrupted already. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, for Zaymar, it comes down to a matter of does he think he can keep it under control? So it, you said, like, do I want to experiment with it in control? He doesn't need to experiment. He knows what it can do. He has been corrupted briefly before, and he has overcome corruption briefly before in dire circumstances so he chooses not to do it if he's it's something that it, it, it's something that he thinks that he can do and control if the circumstances 
happen, but he'd really rather not. <laughs> so does he want to experiment with it? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, it's kind of like if it, if Bush jumps to catch up, he's pretty sure he's going to try and control it or get controlled. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will win out. Yeah, I can empathize as a player, like wanting to control something like that because it's kind of tempted. Um, oh, it's like, I, I hate it. What? <laughs> yeah, I hate I hate the corruption as a player. Like, you haven't been in a position where suddenly you decide to jump off a tower for no reason and try and kill yourself. <laughs> like, yeah, say what? That was a truly shocking moment. <laughs> but if you. No, 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 but, but like not necessarily on yourself, but the idea right, right. of like maybe you could introduce corruption into something and then kind of like shuck it into like a massive, you know, group of people and have it cause havoc essentially. All right, um, you're coming at it from a spellcaster point of view. Zaymar is it, not that. He's basically yeah, yeah. like, I, I touch these things and it leaks into me. Can I stop yeah. it affecting me when I touch it? It's like yeah. reaching your hand into a freezer and like hoping you don't get ice burns when you come out. It's like, do I think I can do it quick enough to like not get hurt? You know, he's like the equivalent of like, or, you know, a fire. I'm going to dip my hand in water and shove it into the fire quickly and like do whatever I need to do. And hopefully I'll take it out and I'm not going to get burnt. But as far as he's yeah. concerned, he's already been tainted in some way because people keep yeah. telling him that. And, you know, so he's just like, he doesn't know what to believe. Um, <laughs> so he's just kind of like, I'll just, you know, I'll do it if I have to, but experiment. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I think I can Stick like empathize of it, but like I don't think Lethe would ever want to do that because she's like terrified of the, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, maybe maybe there are people. God, please don't give our DM ideas, Kevin. But maybe there's <laughs> no oh, stuff God. like that. <laughs> what, I, what I find, what you should know, what everybody should know, is that I like say I've been playing D and D with Simon for a very very many great number of years, and one of my characters was just hugely in love with all types of magic items. And I find it absolutely hilarious that this campaign that we're now in, every magic item I can't touch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> every magic item is like, nope, touch that. And it's going to be bad for you. What? That, that... <laughs> I didn't decide it solely because of your previous character. I know. <laughs> Ultimist would Ultimist would be like, what? <laughs> he would be corrupted within a heartbeat. <laughs> like, oh, magic. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Uh, oh, thanks, uh, Tempest. Yeah, that's very kind. Yeah, um, that's really kind. Yeah, but um, Tempest just said the. Uh, Loves it yeah. when a game ends with chats like this. Yeah, it's it's a, a nice way to sort of wind down, I think. Um, yeah, it's a good good release at the end of it. You just want to get some of the things off of your chest that you were just yeah. like bursting oh, yeah. at the seams to say, uh, in <laughs> like, you know, out of character. You're like, <laughs> also, as a DM, I, until I started doing this, I had no idea what players were thinking <laughs> when they were doing stuff. <laughs> and I've learned so much in the time that we've been doing this. It's, uh, it's super useful which, as a DM. Which, which is a bad thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's like going down and writing notes on us after. I don't need to. I've got a video. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> oh, great. Danger of Will well. Robinson. Yeah, go for it, Mas. No, I was just like, well, thank you to everyone. I think we're done now, aren't we? Yes. I, yeah, I, yeah. I noticed the time. <laughs> I right like you being like, hmm, <laughs> playing mum. <laughs> Who are we going to you know, give the shout out to this I, week? Well, I, I, I'd, I'd like to apologise for coughing and spluttering over everyone, even if you only get virtual spit and you, you do know there is a mute button. <laughs> yeah, but every time I do it, it's my, the, the sound coming out my my laptop gets muted, and it's most frustrating. So I sort of didn't. I just coughing. <laughs> I think I, I overloaded with the, with, the, with the sheer volume of my nose blowing. I thought you were dabbing yeah. regularly. Yeah. Well, I've got in the habit of doing that instead of covering my mouth. Okay, so we just need to, we just need to like pandemic. we just need to mute like okay, so that just gives a mute button, Chris, and then we can just like randomly mute you. <laughs> I have to admit, I showed a, a dab video to um, my partner, and um, 
tried to explain what this thing was and how popular it was and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, I had to show them what, what a dab is, and I can't. <laughs> it's not something I'm <laughs> physically capable of achieving. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and on that note, <laughs>